Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Kafui Day. I'm about to have a conversation with uh, the head of communications at the presidency when the late Professor John Evans Atamills was president of Ghana from 2009 to 2012. My guest is Samuel Koku Anido. Koku, good to have you here. Thank you, Kafui. Why did you give up a promising banking career to go into politics and work with Professor Evans at the moment? <laughs> well, Kafu Yawid, why did I give up a promising banking career? Of course, you and I were in Legon, you know, apart from the fact that you are my nephew. We were in Legon together, you know, from first year to final year, running around campus. All the things that we thought that we will be or will become. But I remember on, on campus, one thing the lecturers kept telling us consistently, maybe we didn't believe it, was that we were only being trained, you know, to have a certain mindset to face the future. And I'm sure 30 years down the line, because we've just celebrated 30 years of coming out of, of, of university at the first degree level. Many of us, I'm sure, have found ourselves in various areas that we look back and we're not too sure how we, we got there, you know. So, yeah, um, how I found myself in, 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 in mainstream politics. Of course, on campus, you know that I was actively in student, in student politics. So, after Legon, so right here in GBC, like I was telling you, I did my post, Legon National Service here, you know, in, in, in GBC audience research, but found myself on television, radio. Some of my producers, Jack Morrow, Chris Taki, Eric Blockbaugh, you know, and um, interesting days here. But of course, fast forward. And um, so I went off in 95 to do a master's in the UK, came back, worked with the United Nations High Commission for Refugees um, for some two, three years, you know, managing the influx of the Sierra Leonean refugees, that was my main beat. The Liberian refugees already were in town, you know, so, but of course, then after that, I moved into the banking sector, Metropolitan and Ally Bank, that's uh, Mr. Shabo's bank, a Malaysian Ghanaian collaboration, the first private commercial bank. So that is where I was, you know, for almost a decade. Of course, in between time, one was still doing politics, but of course, not frontally. But those who knew, knew what I was doing for the NDC, especially um, after the NDC lost the 2000 elections. And so President Kufo uh, took over. And so quite a number of us young guys really came together you know, to stabilize the NDC both at the time. I mean, the, 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 the phrase at the time was proceed on leave. And, report here, report there, and uh, Yoko is looking for you, something. So the, then some of even our big men, some of them said they had quit politics. Some, you know, there was there was a lot of harassment. And so young guys came together. Of course, I was also in the, in the bank, and of course, so supporting in various ways. But Kaf, yes, my strongest gift is writing. So while at the bank, I was doing a lot of writing for the NDC, of course, under pseudonyms. And so I had to, you know, hide my identity. I'm, we are working in a corporate entity and um, you are serving customers from all over. You, you can't use your name otherwise, you, you know, you can affect the corporate image. So with pseudonyms, I was doing a lot of um, pseudonyms. I was doing a lot of writing. What were your pseudonyms? And which paper were you writing for? Oh my goodness. Well, I'm not too sure if I want to, 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 to let it all out. But uh, I started off writing for the Ghana Palava, which was the main NDC paper at the time, edited by Jojo Brusquanza. And so that, that, that's where, let me say, I cut my teeth really with my, my, my writing articles. But then subsequently, I set up my own paper, The Ghanaian Lens, and uh, Kobi Fiagwe was the editor of the Ghanaian Lens. And so, of course, I used to have 
one of the columns I used to write, Uncle JB. Uh, then there was one, Kofi Diewu. What did JB stand for? That's what the JB, if I want to. <laughs> Honestly, I can't say what, what it stood for. I mean, I'll tell you off air. Uh, those who understood, uh, understood what it stood for, but I can't say it now. So Uncle JB and uh, Kofi Diewu. Then, um, yeah, many other articles that uh, I used to write, you know, the Palava uh, in the ring, you know. So, it was out of that. Mm -hmm. And so, in the heat of it, of course, who is this? Who is writing these things, you know, in defense of the NDC? Mm -hmm. So, everybody wanted to know who it was. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, it's not easy to hide these things. Once you're a human being and you're alive. So, who, 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 who. And so, word got out that, oh, it's Koko Ajido who is the one. Of course, you know human beings. Prior to that, other people had been claiming that they were the ones. That they were the ones. <laughs> you know, people look for, for try to look for film where it is not the S, but hey, Salavi, you know. So, of course, President Mills, was on campus when we were on campus, if you remember, if you recall. I mean, he didn't teach me, but we knew him. So I knew him, let me say, you know, from a bit of a distance on campus. In the 90s, early 90s. In the early 90s. So then um, he becomes vice president. He becomes uh, flag bearer. He didn't make it in 2000. Mm -hmm. So he went off to Canada for uh, one year sabbatical. That was when we, these young guys, came together at Kuku Hill in Osu, uh, an office owned by Uncle Harry Sawyer. And so he had virtually handed it over to Professor Mills to use for his political activities. So that's where we, we found ourselves, you know, quite a number of young guys. And that became like our shrine. Mm. And so President Mills came back from Canada, sabbatical to want to lead us into the 2004 elections. So that's when the real relationship then began. So he walked into us. He came to the office? No, of course, that was his office. So okay. once he returned, that's where he, he was operating from as, um, let's say, a de, a de facto uh, flag bearer. Was that the first time you were meeting him face to face? Well, yeah, then politically, yes. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was when I was meeting him face to face. But of course, apart from what we did on campus, especially through the amalgamated sports, but politically, let, that was, let me just say that, that was the first time that I was really engaging him. What was the impression? Can you remember the first day you met him walking into the Kuku Hill office? And what struck you about? Presidents? Well, on campus, I admired him sports-wise. He was all over the place, you know. And then his students at the School of Administration and the faculty, law faculty, who were our friends, never stopped talking about a certain Professor Mills, who was such you know, uh, a colossus in terms of the ability to grasp, you know, the basic, you know, tenets and philosophies underlining or underpinning uh, the subjects that the man, the man taught. So he was somebody I knew. Then, of course, as vice president, um, I didn't stop following him, you know. But then, so then he now becomes our candidate in 2000. And then he didn't make it. So 2001, when we went to Cuckoo Hill. So it's all about him. Now, what really made me want to get close to him has to do with Jerry Rollins. So while President Mills was in Canada, one evening, late afternoon, President Mills, sorry, President Rollins gathered us these young guys. And so we met him at his Ridge office. And Kafui, that day was like, you know, if you, if you read the Bible, you know, Jesus Christ, the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, and how you saw people sit, you know, on the floor and just listening to the Savior. And uh, for me, that's my memory of that encounter with President Rollins. 
So I found myself sitting on the floor. The place was full to capacity. There were no seats. So Charlie, to find somewhere and just sit and listen, listen. Who and who were there? Can you remember? Oh, yeah, quite a number of us. Over the years, I stopped mentioning names, mm -hmm. Kafri, because of how pe petty people have become. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, you want to give vent or you want to spread whatever it is among colleagues and contemporaries. But people have become so petty and unnecessarily jealous about things that I I choose not to mention their names in my discourse. Let them tell their own story. Yeah, I mean. So there were a lot of young people. Oh, a lot, a lot of young people. Yeah, there are some people I can mention because then they don't seem to be in competition with me. So it's okay to mention their names. I mean, people like, yeah, uh, Komla Biakon. Um, we used to call him Soko those days. John Adams. Uh, Gadialakwa. The late Jijote was part of us, Clarissa Numeko, Akolache, and quite a number of other people. What did JJ say? Now, JJ was straight to the point that, that evening. He just wanted us to remain committed to Professor Mills. So he told us a story as to how Professor Mills became his running mate in, in 96. And the story was that as president, he, Jerry Rollins, had a friend, a businessman friend who wanted a favor in terms of some tax concession for his business. And so he summoned Kwesibuchi, Dr. Kwesibuchi, who finance was minister. finance minister then, and kind of gave him the assignment. My friend is looking for some help. Sort him out. Sort him out. A year plus later, he meets the friend again, and in conversation, the friend is like, Child, nothing has happened, though. I've not been sorted. I was like, what? So President Rowling says he called or summoned Dr. Kwesibuchi, and I'm like, why haven't you sorted out my friend? And Dr. Boche is like, Mr. President, it's not me. It's that man at the IRS. Professor Mills. And, and who is that man? <laughs> well, a certain Professor Mills at the IRS, and he's the one who's just been, as it were, stubborn. He's just refusing to budge. And so President Rollins said he asked Dr. Boche to bring in the man. He wanted to meet the man at the castle. So finance minister comes with the IRS boss to come and meet the president. And this is President Rollins telling us that oh, he deliberately kept them waiting for a while. It's part of the, the bullying tactics, you know, just to break the man down, keep him. Eventually, so the man comes and they have this conversation. And this is Rollins again to quote him. I used all my bullying tactics to intimidate this man. This man never, he, he didn't move. Long and short, after Rollins had done all his, and used all his antics, hitting the table and doing everything, he says President Mills, or Professor Mills just looked at him, eyeball to eyeball. And that for the first time in his life, he, Rollins' life, somebody had to look at him for he, Rollins, to disengage. Mm. And that all his life, he looks at people and people disengage. Like an alpha male kind of guy. Good. Okay. But for the first time, this man looked at him deeply. For he, President Rawlings, to disengage was like, what? Who's this? And the man just looked at him and said, Mr. President, you are the President of the Republic. I will not give the concession. If I do, it destroys everything I've tried to do by way of tax reforms in this country. I'm a professional. I'm an academic. I am not going to destroy what I am building. But of course, you are the president. So you want to give some concession to your friend. I'll resign. Immediately I leave you, I'll resign. And you can give all the concessions you want to give in this country. But I will not sit and give any concession that will destroy what I am doing. And President Rollins was like, what? Who is this? Firm, mm -hmm. not shaking. And this was the first time he, Rollins, was engaging the man. Mm -hmm. Long and short, as they say, the rest is history. And so Rollins said, he told the man, please don't resign. Stay and do your work. 
So fast forward in 96, when this same man's name came up for running mate. He was like, what? Bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him. That's how Rollins warmed up to the decision for Prof to become his running mate. Of course, there are other stories, but not for now, not mm -hmm. for this interview. But So then Prof became his running mate, became his vice president. And so here's President Rollins now telling us how professional the man was as his vice president, respected he Rollins, respected the nation, respected principles, and that his fear was that the man loves academia and was always wanting to go back to go and teach. Now that he's in Canada, he's not too sure the man will want to come back and come and lead the NDC. But for those of us who had formed this youth forum, that's what, that was the name of the group, he was virtually pleading with us, anything we can do to bring the man back down, let's bring him down to come and lead the end. So President Rawlings identif identified Professor Mills as leadership material for Ghana. For Ghana. That is why he even did the Swedo Declaration in 1998. So even way back in 1998, Rawlings just did the Swedo Declaration. And those of us who know what Swedo Declaration means in, in the political parlance, is some statement Rawlings made in Swedo at uh, an NDC gathering. And all he said was that he will be leaving the scene, exiting in 2000. And that his vice president, Professor Mills, if for any reason his vice president decides to lead the NDC, he, Rollins, will back his vice president 100%. Of course, that was a tacit endorsement. Who was there to, who was there to dare go against what Rollins was saying. Nobody to look at him eyeball to eyeball. No, I mean, uh, uh, he uh, had virtually decreed mm. that this is my successor. Mm. And that's how come President Mills led the party into the 2000 election. He didn't make it. And so 2001, this is Rollins telling us that we should get the man back in. Thanks to God, he came back from sabbatical. So 2002, we had a Congress in um, Central CAF, Central Cafeteria. Interestingly, Kusiboche was the one who contested him at that internal uh, flag bearer contest. And Professor Mills won, of course, by a very wide margin. And that's how he led us into 2004. 2004, also, whatever happened, happened. He didn't make it. By then, were you working closely with him? So I was working closely with Nkoku Hill. So okay. by 2004, uh, Rojo Metelnunu was then the director of communications for the campaign. And so I was a member of Rojo's team for the 2004 election. So still at the bank, but of course you close, you have your own time, weekends. In fact, we used to meet mostly Sundays in the evenings, late into the night, strategizing and, and, and stuff like that. So, so between 2001 and 2004, yes, I was an integral part of the Cuckoo Hill group, but just one of. Mm. Because so you had a full-time commitment. Good. The bank. So it was post-2004, so 2005. So I was still, so I was in the bank. Uh, I had moved on to become, from executive assistant to uh, uh, Mr. Shabo. I had done some marketing and other things, treasury. But by this time, I was, had progressed to become head of treasury. So you were rising? I was rising. I was rising, uh, Kaufi. I was rising very well. If you were in the bank, uh, if you are still in banking, what position do you think you would be holding right now? Oh, looking at your contemporaries. Well, I'm, okay, my contemporaries are going to have been CEO of one of the banks mm. by now. Mm. I mean, yeah. But it, funnily enough, my whole growing up, banking was not in my scheme of things. Mm. So, like I said earlier on, you know, so with the kind of things that we think, so banking was not in my scheme of things, but then I found myself there. An experience that I'm glad that I have in my portfolio. How do you think it helped your political career? Well, so I'll come, I'll come, I'll come to that. So, by the time 2005, 2000, when Prof was now calling me one-on-one -on -one 
and I make this point clearly that he called me. Oh, he called oh, you? Oh, yeah, coffee. Mm. He called me. He had arrived from South Africa. He had gone for, yeah, a health checkup in South Africa. He arrived. We met him at Kutuka International Airport. We had organized a big welcome for him. It was there at the airport that he made his first pitch. Koku, I will call you for us to have a conversation. At the airport? At the airport. Mm. So he called subsequently and then he said, Koku, I'm setting up my campaign team. You know, I'm going to contest for flag bearer again. And um, I want a very small team, but very efficient. I found somebody from Greater Accra who also has tree background, can speak Hausa. I found somebody from Northern Extraction. So this Greater Accra one speaks Ga, speaks Dangbe, or speaks tree, speaks Hausa. Then I've got somebody from Northern Extraction. I need only one person more. That person must be from the Volta region because the Volta region is the World Bank of the NDC. And so can you help me identify somebody from the Volta region? So I remember having a chat with, you know, of course, Kobe Fiagbe at the time, because we were working very closely on the Ghanaian lens. It's like, what kind of assignment is this? Who am I going to identify <laughs> from the region? I mean, ish. Coffee. Within two days, I got a call again. From, have you found some from 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 from, 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 from Have you found the person for me? And I'm like, hey, what kind of uh, Herculean task is this? Was it hard, hard to find somebody? Well, Kafi, who was I going to? I mean, the man has given you a certain criteria. Mm. The person must be eloquent. The person must be confident. The person must be, you know, well-spoken. Cultured, of course. I mean, it was who, of course, understood the politics of NDC and the politics of Ghana. And the person must also be a good writer. Now, am I going to put out a search and, and, and say people should bring their CVs? <laughs> and why me? I mean, there are fathers in the party. So they, they should be looking for that, not me. I'm just a young one in the party. Kafi, by the third call, it was a Monday morning. I had finished morning devotion and the call came. And so, and he, he just went straight to the point. Koku, I want you to work for me. Ah. It is you I have been wanting. But, so I'm now telling you, because you fit the bill. Because I've been reading your article. So back to the things I used to write from way back in the Palaba. And in the Ghanaian lens and other things. Did so it cross your mind that he was he was he was actually trying to pitch to you indirectly? No, 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 no. Until that morning mm -hmm. when he called, for me it never occurred to me. I mean, I'm doing my bank work, and that is where my focus is. Of course, around that time, I was had I was at the School of Communications in Legon, trying to do a second master's at the at the. So I was. You're busy. I was busy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I mean, for that word. I was busy. Yes, I'll be doing my politics on the side, you know, do my sports bit on the side. I used to be a sports pundit also on Radio Gold. So how was it that it was me that the man was looking for? So when he called and he said, it's you I'm looking for, I'm like, what? So I remember sitting on the bed with my, 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 my fiancé at the time. And so the conversation was going on, and I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't worry. Ooh. OK, sir. I'll resign, sir. And she kept looking at me. You didn't discuss with her? No. So <laughs> of course, she knew I was, I was into politics. Yes. But so by the time the conversation was over, and I said, sir, I'll, I'll resign. I'll come and work for you. So she, I finished, and she's like, who are you talking to? And I said, I'm talking to Professor Mills. And you are going to resign what? I said, I'm going to resign from, from the job. Why? I said, why? He wants me to work for him. And she just sat there on the bed and just kept looking at me. Very deep look. It didn't take you long to decide. Or is it the force of uh, Professor Mills' argument? Actually, I was tired with the bank work. Mm. So I was looking for a way out. <laughs> but I didn't know how it was going to happen. 
So going to Mascom to go and do that was to now hone in something I knew God had given me by way of the communication, communication skills. Mm -hmm. PR, writing, journalism, everything. So once I had that, then I was going to actually find a way out and then move straight into PR. And then this call comes. So for me, it was an easy decision. Of course, Mr. Shagbo had by that time exited. The founder of the bank. The founder of the bank had exited. You know, this, you know, these mergers and, 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 and acquisitions. Yeah, that's the term. And so there was some form of measures and acquisition taking place at the time. So eventually, Metropolitan Ala Bank became UT Bank. But before UT Bank, it became BPI. I don't know what it is today. Of course, I think G GCB is something. Yes, yeah. was taken over. Good. So in the in the in the midst of the measures and acquisition, I could see that look, having been executive assistant to Mr. Shagbo, and so you're attending all these board meetings and he's all over the place with you, he's traveling with you. Not everybody's gonna be happy. In fact, and just after the exit of Mr. Shagbo. I got hit in the face with the first one, bam. A very close friend of mine, I used to do everything with him. Little did I know that apparently they say he had been penciled to be executive assistant to Ashabo until I came on board. And so when Mr. Ashabo saw my CV and my experience, he preferred me because mm -hmm. that one was the first degree holder. I had come with a master's. Like I said, I had done a bit of GBC, I had done UN. And so he thought that, well, I was a bit, I was a bit more broad-minded to work for him as his executive assistant. I didn't know I had annoyed somebody. And so after how many years? Six, seven years, eight years, once Mr. Shabu exited, I'm like, what? And the person just turned around against me and I'm like, hey. And of course, the new people were coming in and so people are now running, a, you know, a beeline to them and wanting to, like, oh, this one was, he was loyal to Ashabo, he was loyal to Ashabo. So I started making my, my, my decisions already. So once this call came in, it was a godsend. Ash! Within a week, I was out of the bank. And I remember Alute Jacobs. One and only Alute Jacobs. He was Central Region Propaganda Secretary for the NDC and called me one morning and said, Kofi Kumsin, Chronicle, happened to be his friend. And so in a conversation, Kofi Kumsin had mentioned to him that uh, he said that I've left the bank. And so he can't believe that I've left the bank just to go and do opposition politics. Mills was supposed to be sick and was going to die. There's no way he's going to become president. So he suspected that I had done some dubious deal in the bank and you're running and away. I was running away. Of course, of course. Who else? And so he apparently so Kofi Kums actually went and ran his checks. Mm -hmm. And I had I had done nothing wrong. I left with a clean, you know, a clean sheet. Who else thought your decision was crazy? Oh, some close friends thought that it was crazy. Um maybe in my memoirs I'll put the specifics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But even to a point, you know. Colleagues, even within the banking sector, mm. thought that, I mean, well, you are, like you're saying, I was rising. You were a high flyer. I mean, the trajectory was looking good. Why are you leaving to go and do politics for somebody who lost in 2000 and 2004? And by that time, his ill health issues had started kicking in. Mm. It had started catching the headlines. So the man is sick, he's going to die. What's your problem? And um, I remember a very prominent woman, very prominent, called me to her office. I used to manage funds for her organization at the bank. And like, I was so sure because at that meeting, she opened up more of her funds for me to see. I'm like, There's this, all this is available for you to manage. Why are you going to work for this man who will never become president anyway? Just stay here and, and, and work. And I laughed. Kafi, 
for me, that call I received from Professor Nell that morning, of course, I mean, as I now understand more and better things of the realms, it was a calling. Yes, the former vice president. The call was a calling. The call was a calling. Yeah, the call was a calling. It's a former vice president, NDC flag bearer, astute professor, taxman, statesman. Just mention it. Population of Ghana at the time, maybe 23, 24 million people. How old was I then? Maybe mid 30s. Mm. And of all the people in Ghana, it is you that he decides that he will call for you to work for him. And that morning, his words were, Koku, I am not a failure. I've never failed in my life. Not winning in 2000 and 2004 doesn't make me a failure. I believe strongly that I'm going to win in 2008. And you have something as I watch you. There's something you have that you can use to help me become president of the republic. And then when I said that, sir, I'll work for you, he said, Koko, I don't have money to pay you. I know where you are working and I can't match your salary there. And I remember saying to him that, sir, if it was about money, you wouldn't call me. And that when Christ called Peter and his brother on the shores of Galilee, those guys were rich guys by any standards. To own a vessel, to own a boat in those days, even today, if you understand the geography of Galilee. So fishing was a very lucrative business in those days. But for them to have left their nets to follow Christ because he called them, Luke was a medical doctor. And so the people who followed Christ were not men of straw. But because he called them into service, they became his disciples. And for me, when I look back, it was a calling. And Kafi, how many years down the line? Today is 23rd July. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow will be 24th July. Exactly 11 years since President Mills passed. If I count back to when he called me, so it's almost 20 years, I have no single regret taking the decision to work for him. And once I agreed to work for him, we went into a pact. And the pact was simple. Say, you've called me to work for you and I'm going to commit myself to you. I want only one thing. Be truthful to me. Once you are truthful to me, I'm prepared to put my head on the chopping block or chopping board for you. And Kafri, working for the man, the honesty. That is why when he was alive and I was around him, people have come up with all kinds of theories and stories and I was supposed to have been the prime minister of Ghana. I was too powerful. I wasn't the prime minister. I wasn't powerful. But I had a mandate. And the mandate was based on the authority of the man I was working for. And I knew that anything that I said, I will not go back and eat my words. So I put every passion and every power behind everything I said, knowing very well that I won't finish saying it and go back and hang myself. And as the records have it now, I don't think I said anything that I ever had to go back and recant or, or swallow my words because the man was truthful to me. So he kept his side of the bargain. He kept his side of the It was very truthful. And so mine was to be loyal to him. 